extraordinary. Perhaps that's why they're protesting in Whitehall and in Manchester and all over the country and in New York. They're really, really upset. Do you know what's happened? Somebody has just won an election on a manifesto and they're actually going to carry it out. Isn't that shocking? Isn't that stunning? I know we're used to people who simply lie to us at elections and then don't do what's in the manifestos. When Trump talked about these things, when he made his pitch to the American people, he meant it and he's putting it in place. But can we please, can we please get one or two things right? I'm getting a bit tired of the BBC and others who constantly give us the impression that somehow this is all about banning Muslims. So let's just be clear. This is the executive order. He signed this at the weekend. And the executive order does not use the word Muslim at any point in it, nor does it use the word ban. It is a temporary, temporary travel restriction. And the idea is that with these seven countries... They will, at the end of a 90-day period, work out what the right vetting measures are to put in place before they allow people to come into America from those countries. And, by the way, those countries were not chosen arbitrarily by Donald Trump. Those countries were chosen by President Obama. It was President Obama that identified these countries as posing a threat and a risk to America. So it is a travel suspension, and I'm putting it to you that as this was in his manifesto, as he was voted in to do this, frankly, if you're opposing what Donald Trump has done, you are against democracy and you are against the democratic process. If you think I'm wrong, then come and tell me. You can get involved by calling 0345 6060 You can text me at 84850. You can tweet me on at LBC, don't forget the hashtag Farage on LBC, and you can watch the show live, go to LBC's Facebook page now. So I repeat, I repeat the point I'm making. I'm saying that this is part of a democratic process and that if you oppose this, you are against democracy. And I'm going to ask Ade in Finchley what he thinks about that. Hi, Nigel. Hello there. Um, it's kind of shocking. I mean, you've always been someone who's opposed whatever orders like the current government has always had and stuff. And now you think it's anti-democratic to oppose something the president said. Well, Ade, what I'm saying is that he it was... I mean, in fact, you could argue, Ade, uh, that actually what he did at the weekend was far milder than some of the things he said during the presidential okay. campaign. And I, I totally agree with that. It could be mild, it could be different, it could, but are you saying being in an opposition or not, not agreeing with the current government means you're anti-democratic? Because that would mean you've been anti-democratic all the time. Yes. Or well, any time you opposed any current government that campaigned on something, went ahead with what they campaigned on, and you oppose that, that would make you anti-democratic as well, wouldn't it? The point I'm making, Ade, is that it seems that all these protesters and large sections of the media on both sides of the Atlantic are saying that it's wrong, that he hasn't got the right to do this. And I'm arguing that he has got the right to do this, that he's got a democratic mandate. And, and Ade, what you're not getting, and what you're not being told, and this came out about an hour and ten minutes ago, is the latest Rasmussen poll in America says that 57% of U.S. voters favour this temporary restriction. So, oh, he, he... Oh, 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 I agree with you. I mean, that's right. People can favour it. But you said, like, if you oppose it, mm. it makes you anti-democratic. Now, how, how can you say something like that? I mean, being in an opposition is part and the foundation of democracy. You cannot yeah, agree yeah. with everything a government says. You, you of all people should know no, that. I, 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 I get that bigger, broader point. But what I'm saying is that, that the argument that I'm hearing is not that it's wrong to do this. The argument that I'm hearing is that it's illegal, uh, that, 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 that he shouldn't be able to do this. And the other thing, Ade, that upsets me is they're putting it in terms of it being a Muslim ban. And I just made the point, if you look at the executive order itself, nowhere does it say these things. And I think this is a real genuine distortion of what Trump's actually done in the last few days. Well, if you want to put it on that fact, I'm not going to, because everybody's entitled to their opinion about that, but for yeah. you to say it's 
anti-democratic to go against the executive order. I just wanted to point out right. to you that's wrong because you've always been opposed to what governments have campaigned yep. on and been voted for. It, it's to yeah. Ade, the democracy to be in an opposition. Ade, you're dead right on that. I have campaigned long and hard against every British government on, on certain issues, uh, but I've never argued they hadn't got a right uh, to have those opinions or put those things in place. And I thank you for the call. And I asked Mike in Stevenage, what do you think, Mike? I mean, are these protesters anti-democratic or are they uh, playing a healthy part in debate? I think that in a democratic, pluralist society, you are allowed to express your opinion and protest freely, yep. whether or not your opinion agrees with the executive. I think that is one of the joys of living in this country. I mean, the fact that I really dislike everything about you, Kip, and I can have this conversation is a wonderful thing about this part, about this wonderful country of ours, and I think we can at least agree on that much. Uh, yeah, we can. So, so, Mike, are you surprised that Donald Trump is, 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 is holding true to his manifesto? No, but I, I thought he was a fairly horrible, horrible uh, 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 campaign that he ran anyway. And the thing is, when you say it's not about Muslims, mm. the moment he decided to say that when he, even when he loosens this ban, he will make Christians have preference over the, over the refugees, that makes it about Muslims. It makes it about religion. Once you mention a religion that's preferential, it has to be about religion. Well, it? well, there were lots of people being persecuted in Germany and Austria in, in, in the sort of middle, late 1930s, but we did give the Jews preference, Mike, didn't we? Because they were specifically under threat. I'm afraid, but that, you're, you're arguing against yourself there, Mr Farage, because at that point it becomes about religion. Well, actually... And you're saying it's not about religion, it's about countries, and it's not about countries... <laughs> because he's going to make it about religion the minute he lets Christians okay. in and not Muslims. Right, two different things here, Mike. One is that these countries pose a threat to America. That is not what Trump's saying. That is what Obama and his administration said, and Trump has followed on from that. The other argument, Mike, is about who qualifies as a refugee, and I think there are times when religions or races or people with particular political views actually do genuinely qualify as Refugees, And I did make the argument, Mike, you know, three years ago uh, that actually I thought the Christians in Syria and Iraq were in a uniquely awful situation uh, because they literally had nowhere to go. There was no neighbouring country to go to. So I think there are times when it comes to defining a refugee where actually religion matters, Mike. Well, I, I, I can understand some of your point there, but you would also then have to realise that Syria mm -hmm. and Iraq were... Had, had Christians in this country from before, before we had Christians in our country. And it wasn't until the West started meddling in their countries that we encouraged and enabled these various extremists. Mike, and the second point, Mike yes. you, and I, you and I on that point are going to be in virtually total agreement. I think we've made some catastrophic decisions. In fact, I think in many ways we've actually helped create ISIS. So I agree with you on that point strongly. Uh, Mike, thank you. I've got to move on. I've got to ask Andrew in Norwich what he makes of all this. Hello, Norwich. Hi, Nigel. How are you? Good evening. I'm fine, thank you. Although I'm very lonely, Andrew, because I'm oh. about... I, I think I'm the only elected politician who said, look, this is what Trump said he'd do. He's doing it. What's wrong with that? Nigel, I, I support Brexit, and I've often sort of echoed your views. And I think we had a common understanding when it came to the Syria vote, when it came to us, whether are we going to you know, bomb Syria or are we not? We, we both agreed that I don't think we should do, because provoking ISIS and inflama inflaming the, the tensions that we have at the moment would be a very, very bad thing to do. Would you not agree? Uh, I, I, I don't want to inflame ISIS in any way at all, but I certainly also, Andrew, don't want to allow... ISIS people to come into our country if we can possibly stop them. So, you know, my main argument against Mr Juncker and then Mrs Merkel was that you, you, letting in vast numbers of people without the ability to check or vet any of them surely was inviting terrorism into Europe. Nigel, I, I, have, to, I have to agree with that. I mean, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not for Merkel's policy at all. I think it is potentially extremely dangerous. But the one thing I would say is uh, Nigeria... Tunisia and Saudi Arabia, you know, especially Tunisia and Saudi Arabia, come one and two in the pecking order for who has actually been main recruiters for ISIS and open countries. We saw, you know, the Tunisian terror attack. 
if this really is about safety, surely you must you know, agree, why aren't these nations on, on the terrorist list? Why is why wow. it bad? You know, that's, that's the thing I'm worried about here. I'm, I'm worried that we actually could be more damaged than good by what Trump is doing. Well, I also, Andrew, think there's a degree, there's a degree of rank hypocrisy about all of this. And I've, I've watched the Commons debate today and I've seen SNP and I've seen the One Green and I've seen Labour people. And, 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 and they're all saying that these terrible things have happened, that Trump is the worst man in the world. And I think this is absolutely laced with hypocrisy. Um, text, loony leftists protesting over a storm in a teacup. Obviously got nothing better to do than protest against Trump. Tracy in Laylam. Um, a tweet here. Um, so you're saying that disagreeing with Trump's policy is undemocratic. Uh, what are opposition parties for then? Uh, that's from uh, Margarita. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm saying it's perfectly fine to have these debates, but to say that he should not be allowed to put this into place when he's just got a democratic mandate to do so. Actually, it's quite right that he's putting it into place. I find it, I've got to tell you, wholly refreshing that we have a leader who's won an election who within a week has implemented, through presidential orders, vast, vast tracts of what he campaigned for and won right across the country. I think it's terrific. Right now, you're listening to The Nigel Farage Show here on LBC. Trump gets elected, and within a week, he does what he said he'd do. He tries to make America safer. He puts a temporary travel ban of 90 days on a series of countries that Obama had identified as being a threat to America, and the world goes mad. And as we speak, just half a mile away or so, they are protesting in 10 Downing Street. Now, I have a feeling that some of the motivations here are very similar to the anti-Brexit protesters. There's a lot of people out there that do not like the year 2016 and would like to reverse us back to 2015. I think you're anti-democratic, you people. I think you simply cannot accept what has happened. Now, if you're listening to us uh, down there in Whitehall and you want to get your voice heard, I promise you, I will listen. Tell me that I'm wrong. Tell me that actually the American election was all a terrible mistake and that Donald Trump shouldn't be allowed to do these things. I'm here. If you want to come and have a go, ring 0345 6060 And your Facebook messages coming in. Liz Weston says, Muslims with a British passport are allowed into the USA. How can it be a Muslim ban? Liz, it is not a Muslim ban. I wish other media outlets would stop portraying it as if it is. Billy Forrest says, to be honest, what happens in America should stay in America. Why the hell are people getting involved in this country? And John Giuseppe says, where were the protests when Obama did this eight years ago? Thank you, John, because just before the break, I talked about hypocrisy. In 2009, two al-Qaeda activists were found in Kentucky. Uh, it led to a lot of soul-searching. And Obama decided that what he'd do is he'd put in place a ban for six months for anybody with an Iraqi passport to go into America. What a monstrous, awful, dreadful thing to do. Do you remember Jeremy Corbyn protesting about it? Do you remember Chukka Ramuna? Do you remember the whole of Parliament being an uproar? Do you remember the marches that took place? No, I don't remember anything. And why? Because Obama's a good guy. He's nice. He's really cool. And Donald's a bad guy. This is all about Trump. It's about people not liking Trump and not accepting the big changes that took place in 2016. Trump is fulfilling his democratic mandate. He's putting in place measures to make immigration into America safer, to lessen the risk of ISIS getting in. And I, frankly, I genuinely believe that people that oppose this are, are, have now turned themselves against the very idea of a democratic process. I wonder what Oscar in Brighton thinks. Oscar, what do you think? Is, is Trump right to do this or wrong to do this? Hi, Nigel. Hi. Hi. I just wanted to say I love you. You're doing God's work. God's work? Well, I mean, many things have been said to me over the years. Uh, but I've never been told that. So I think on the basis of that, Oscar, uh, we'll move on to Brendan in Nottingham and see what he has to say. Brendan, good evening. Hello there, Nigel. First time on your show. Pleasure to go, uh, find a get Welcome. hold of you there. Welcome. Right. Brendan, what do you think? Right, well, basically, I've, I've made a few notes, if I can just share them with you. 
Now, first of all, if people want to complain, Nigel, mm-hmm. why don't they criticise the American citizens for their decision? Now, you don't have to agree or support with what he said, because the U.S. the U.S. citizens did. Yes. It's none of our business. End of. I mean, protesting, protesting, an objection. That's fine. No problem. No problem. Okay. Everyone's got a right or right in free country to protest and object. Mm. Demanding reversal. Uh, oh, I think Brexit comes to mind. <laughs> yep. Demanding reversal is disrespect for the democratic decision. Now, when many many people in the UK were furious when Obama came over here, tried to interfere with the democratic process in the EU referendum, and quite rightly so. Why? Because it was none of his flipping business. And what Americans and the people the Americans wish to vote for, when they actually vote, for, they actually get someone. Oh my goodness, I'm going to faint and have a heart attack if I don't know which one first that actually follows through on his manifesto. Yeah, quite. You know, quite. The, the Amer- all I can say is the Americans, well done for choosing someone that actually keeps their word. No one has to agree with his policy. Well, We're Brendan, you, you know, what he's done. your call and one of the Facebook messages both making the point that actually this is about American domestic politics. This is a choice that, that he is making on behalf of the American people as their correctly elected president. And that's what beggars belief with me, Brendan, that 1.4 million people... Now, I don't know how many of them are British, because you can sign up wherever you are in the world, but 1.4 million people, and including some really important people, the Mayor of London, Jeremy Corbyn, are saying we should actually ban an American president who's been justly elected, who is a friend of this country, and they actually, Brendan want to ban him from Britain. What do you make of that? Uh, you said they were important people. I <laughs> say, so excuse me if we move on from there. Well, and basically, all this is just a repeat of the anti-Brexit vote. Brendan, I'm with you, and I thank you for your first-time call and the points that you've made very much indeed. We go to Con in Hertfordshire. Con, what do you make of it? Hello, Nigel. Uh, first time caller. I just, you know, want to highlight the fact you you reiterate um, democracy. He was democratically elected, but I'm, you know, I believe I do believe in democracy. But isn't the ideology flawed in the sense that he didn't have the majority of votes? He oh. lost the popular vote. Oh, con. No British par- No British prime minister has had a majority of votes in our lifetimes. In fact. Yeah. You know, we, we, yep. we've even had um, big Labour majorities on sort of 37% of the vote. So, so this is all about the system that you've got. Um, and, you know, you're right. Hillary won California by a big margin. Uh, but under the, under the Electoral College, he won it by a country mile. So I I'd, I'd, honestly, Con, I don't think uh, any argument about his legitimacy makes any sense. Well... OK, let's assume the facts... Let's assume that he did win the majority vote. But democracy is flawed in that sense, but depending on the system. But say he did win the uh, majority of vote. And, you know, hypothetically, everybody in America agrees with what he's saying. It doesn't necessarily mean or, um, you know, make the fact that what he's saying or the executive orders that he's pushing through make them correct. Mm. It, as in, it's the right thing to do. And, yeah, we can point the fingers back in the past... I say A president did this and B president did this, but that doesn't necessarily make it right either. No, because it could be bad policy, Con, and I get that, but all I'm saying is he was elected on this. Within a week, he's acted on it, and to say that it's not legitimate for him to do it, that's the argument that upsets me. Connor, thank you very much for your call. I'm going to go to Kelly in Peckham next. Kelly, what do you make of Mr Trump's behaviour? Uh, I think uh, you are a mouthpiece for President Bannon, uh, who is the rear... Uh, controlling power behind the Trump uh, charade. And uh, what's, what, how much do you get paid and which Swiss bank account does it uh, normally get credited to? Because I think uh, there's a very sinister motive here. Well, thank you. Mouth, no, thank you for your very sweet phone call. Um, Steve Bannon uh, is a friend of mine. You're absolutely right. And he, for the last few years, ran the Breitbart website, um, who set up in the United Kingdom and who were active and very helpful in the run-up to Brexit. So Steve Bannon is a friend of mine. Yes, he's been much maligned uh, by the media in the UK and America and elsewhere, and he now uh, you know, finds himself in a very senior um, advisory role to President Trump. I'm really sorry to have to tell you that I'm not being paid a penny by them. Absolutely nothing. I did, I think, get a bottle of fizzy water 
when I was in Trump Tower. So maybe I can declare that to you. But I haven't been paid a penny. I'm sorry, so sorry to disappoint you. There's no Swiss bank accounts or anything like that. I'm doing it because I believe it's the right thing to do. Now, your Facebook messages chunking in. Daniel Bond says, as a Brit who has lived in the USA since 2011, I can tell you it's exactly the same people protesting the inauguration, the march and the restriction. They're upset, Hillary and Bernie liberals. I'm very happy with the job he's doing so far. David Hawke says, I'm banning all loony liberals from coming into my house. Who wants to know the address? They can come and protest outside. <laughs> I'd rather like that. Um, we're going to take another call. We're going to St. Helens, and we're going to ask Thomas, are these protesters against democracy, Thomas? Uh, well, hello, Nigel, by the way. Hello, there. Um, um, well, you know, I don't think they're against democracy in a sense. I mean, you know, I, I mean, I've thought quite a, a lot about this policy over the past couple of days. Uh -huh. I've been racking my head about it, and, you know, I've come to the conclusion that actually maybe I don't, I don't actually support it. I don't think it's going to achieve very much, but, you know, what I say to a lot of people is, and I actually want to put a message out there to a lot of people, because I've, I've been in university in Manchester today, and all I've seen is people protesting. You know, they're saying all these different things, and, you know, we've got, you know, Jeremy Corbyn and Tim Farron saying yep. things like, you know, we want to ban dolls from coming to the country. We've got this massive petition going on. It's got a million signatures saying, you know, keep out of our country, Donald. You know, I just think that's absolute bigotry. Well, it, and also, isn't it? Isn't that real student politics? Shouldn't Jeremy Corbyn well, have grown exactly, up a little bit? You know, you know what, what, what I like to say to people is, you know, I want people to think critically. And, you know, I know that people have very strong opinions about this either way, but you have to look at, you have to look at the facts. You have to look at the reality of the situation. You know, when I think about, you know, OK, maybe I might not agree with Donald Trump on this, mm. but... What's banning him from the country going to do? What is that going to achieve? Wow. You know, Donald Trump is a very headstrong person. And even if Theresa May, and I'm glad that she hasn't caved into this, even if she turned around and said, you know, Donald, we don't want you to come to this country, this, this so-called Muslim ban, which, like you said, is just completely and utterly free. Oh, yes. Oh, it's yes. not a Muslim ban at all. Thomas, you know, if Thomas, if we, time, Thomas, if we're stupid enough... Uh, to do this and to ban him from our country, we will look very silly indeed. And I would say this, I would feel much safer living under President Trump than I would under Chancellor Merkel. You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show, exclusively here on Did And within a week, he does what he said he'd do. He would put in place some suspensions so they can work out a proper vetting policy from countries that President Obama said were a challenge and a threat to America. And because... He is not opening up the door to refugees. We've got large chunks of the media, huge sections of the House of Commons, a million people signing petitions, protesters just down the road from where I am now in Whitehall and elsewhere in this country and in America. You're all hypocrites, every single one of you. Not only did you not attack Obama when he put a complete ban for six months on anybody coming into America from Iraq, but how about this? How about the fact that Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Kuwait, Bahrain, Oman and the UAE have not taken one single Syrian refugee? In fact, the Saudis said they didn't want to take refugees from Syria because they worried what it would do to the balance of their society. So can we please start condemning these countries? Oh, and let's move on to something juicier, shall we? Real travel bans based on religious prejudice. Did you know the following countries will not allow any Jewish Israeli passport holders into their country? Algeria, Bangladesh, Brunei, Iran, Iraq, Kuwait, Lebanon, Libya, Malaysia, Oman, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, Sudan, Syria, the UAE and the Yemen. So can we please ban everybody from those countries? Any leader from those countries must never come to must never come here. I'm waiting for Jeremy Corbyn and Tim Farron and Caroline Lucas to stand up and make big speeches. I'm looking forward to the protests against this vile anti-Jewish prejudice. And am I going to see it? Am I going to hear it? No, because it's not Donald Trump and he's the devil. It is all rank hypocrisy. And I wonder what Nick in West Des Moines in Iowa makes of all of this. Nick, good afternoon to you. And good afternoon. And as you can tell, I'm a Brit. <laughs> I I'm thought not so. displaced. OK. <laughs> First of all, Nigel, I, I appreciate seeing you on Fox News and the Fox and Friends because you bring a, fresh of sh a breath of fresh air. And certainly, as you know, they utilise your skills 
which I think the public should do. And first of all, that's the first commendation to you. Well, that's very sweet of you. That's very sweet of you, Nick. But tell me about what Trump has... I mean, surely hasn't Trump just held faith with the electors of Iowa and elsewhere? Well, he, oh, he uh, absolutely. And as you know, here in the Midwest, it was the Midwest that was the big swing. Yep. The important thing, the question is, today, lawsuits are coming around and being thrown around like cricket balls. And I can assure you, the biggest waste is to the American taxpayer because there is nothing they can do to stop President Trump in the laws that are already on the books and have been challenged in the Supreme Court three times and failed. And this is the laws they're going after. They're trying to stop him any which way he can because the man is a doer. He doesn't just use his mouth. He's used his fingers to absolutely sign the documents, the executive orders. And he has assembled, as you know, because you've been there, Uh, And by the way, I've done business with Trump uh, for several years. There is the man that you and I know. And he has surrounded himself with experts because that's how you are successful. Uh, Yes, he has. But what gets me, Nick, is that, you know, this executive order does not use the word Muslim and does not use the word ban. And yet everyone's going, well, not everyone, a lot of people are going bananas in America. Well, you you are correct. And, And also you mentioned one country, uh, Malaysia. Mm. I happen to have the greatest pleasure of spending a couple of weekends with Dr. M, Dr. Mahathy, who was the prime minister for 23 years. Mm. And I'm going back a couple of years, just a couple of years, and we talked about terrorism. We talked about the issues of what do you do with borders. And as he said, we have to know the people. That is why vetting and extreme vetting is very important. We call it VIP. Yep. Uh, because VIP is certainly the most important way because you are going to vet, you're going to interview, and you're going to process. Because you want to know who's behind the face, not the words they're giving you. And that they're right. The difficulty is anybody coming in from the Middle East or any uh, Syria, how do we know who they are? I know. Well, that's right. No, I, I, Nick, I, honestly, I think Trump was very motivated by seeing what, what has been going on over the course of the last year in France and Germany. By the way, Nick, quick question for you. How long have you been in the USA? 32 years. And you talked about cricket balls. There's clearly no hope for you. Well, you clearly no hope for you. You're, you will not ever have an American accent, uh, and you will remain a Brit in Iowa. And I thank you very much indeed for your call. Uh, Facebook messages coming in. Matt Stanyard says, I am no fan of Donald Trump, but he is the elected leader of the USA. We should carry on as normal with relations. It is not for us to judge. The Americans are not a stupid people. Sure, they can be a bit daft, but if he goes too far, I'm sure they'll rein him in. So far, Matt, all he's done... All he's done is, 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 is to carry out what he was elected for. Um, a, a text here. Hi, Nigel. There is a pro-Trump visit petition on the government website. Please mention it on your show so people who have the sensible view can show their support. Thanks. Uh, and I wonder what Malik in Swansea. Malik, you know, I'm arguing that, 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 that there's something wrong here, that the guy was elected on a platform which he's trying to carry out. And there's something fundamentally wrong with all these petitions and all these protests. What do you think, Malik? I think it's the duty of any person who believes in democracy and equality to protest against this ban. I mean, I don't care. It, it's, not, it, it, it's not important whether you call it ban or restriction. And it's not important whether it targets Muslims or it targets a group of people in certain countries. And in this way, you're labeling all people in this country are a threat. I mean, I would support, I would support vetting uh, to, to protect the... And I mean, if we cast away these big mottos like protecting the American people, which is important, I think. But yeah. you protect you, you never you never protect American people by just simply banning people from certain countries to come in. I mean, it, it, the, the threat is ISIS's threat. And I tell you, from Syria and Iraq, I tell you, in Syria and Iraq, you probably know that all people there, all fractions, all parties who, who are even fighting each other are fighting ISIS, and ISIS is fighting everybody. So you can't label everyone from Syria and Iraq as ISIS because the great all people there, it's not the great majority. I mean, everyone... No, 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 Mal- Malik, ISIS Malik, is- nobody, Malik, nobody you know, has, has argued the great majority of people are potentially terrorists. But the problem is, Malik, that, you know, if even 1% of those that have gone into Germany 
actually are ISIS sympathizers and are prepared to do something about it, that is a very, very frightening prospect. And Malik, you said yourself that you think vetting makes sense. I suspect that in 90 days' time, what you will see from Trump's administration is a vetting procedure in place. And as far as Syria is concerned, I think what you're going to see is the idea of the creation of some safe zones. So, Malik, you know, ring us back in 90 days' time, uh, and you may well be very satisfied uh, with what they've actually done. I wonder what Sajad from Bradford uh, makes of all of this. Good evening. Good evening, Nigel. Uh, excellent show. Thank you. Uh, just want to say, my father is 94. Yep. He served in the British Army, and he fought uh, very proudly for uh, the Queen and country. And I think, uh, as a British Muslim, I actually respect the decision of the American people. And I think we need to respect the fact that they've chosen this leader and we need to let him carry on and let him, you know, implement these policies. And if they don't like these policies, then in the course of time, duly, uh, you know, deselect him through the yes. democratic process. But I would like to say one thing, you know, with regards to your comments about you feeling very safe under Trump as opposed to Merkel. Yes. The problem I have with that, Nigel, is that currently in the UK, where for the country which my father fought for, mm. under this rise of right-wing hysteria, fanned by people like yourself, you know, my father, a Muslim, a proud Brit, is living terrified he is literally terrified hearing news of mosques getting burnt down hearing news of you know people getting shot in canada in mosques i know you know imams uh, 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 a prominent imam getting punched in the face in hull a peace loving guy getting blinded and the fact that somebody like even like kim kardashian who's a socialite she's not a, a politician like yourself even she recognizes that lawnmowers kill more people in the States than radical Islam. And you, of all people, Nigel, married to immigrants, right? Your wife is an immigrant. The only difference um, is she's not a Muslim um, and she's not black or colored. Sajad, it, it is in the interests of everybody living in this country and living in America, whether they're Muslim or Christian or Jewish or whatever they are, it is in the interest of all of us that we stop bad people with evil intentions coming into our country. Because if we let them in, then what will happen are those horrible attacks and all the things that you've talked about, quite correctly, will actually just get worse. And none of us, absolutely none of us, want that. Right now, you're listening to The Nigel Farage Show, exclusively here that Trump is fulfilling the pledges that he made to the American people and that it's refreshing for leaders actually to do what they say. And I have tried in the last three quarters of an hour, to point out to you there is rank hypocrisy everywhere. Nobody condemned Obama when he put a six-month ban on Iraqis. I've been through the list of countries uh, that refused to take a single Syrian, despite the fact they're next-door neighbours, and I talked about countries that completely refuse to accept Jews from Israel into their country, you know, even on holiday. Well, talking of hypocrisy, let's have a little go at this, shall we? The Labour MP for Hampstead, uh, who is Tulip Sadiq, uh, was railing this morning, saying that Trump's travel ban was appalling and that he was targeting Muslims. Well, actually, uh, Tulip Sadiq, as I've done my very best to point out from the executive order, he was doing none of these things. But there's a nice little tweet that's gone to Tulip Sadiq from a conservative activist called Daniel Hamilton. And he says... Could you please ask your aunt, who's the Prime Minister of Bangladesh, to lift the country's ban on Jewish Israelis? So, Tulip Sadiq, at the minute, you're being charged with rank hypocrisy, but the lines are still open. So please call me on 0345 60 60 973. Tell me why it's absolutely wrong for Trump to put a 90-day suspension until he works out a vetting policy from countries that Obama said was dangerous, but why it's absolutely fine and dandy for your aunt 
to ban Jews from Israel going to Bangladesh. I'm looking forward to that phone call. But meanwhile, I go to Al in Finchley and I ask Al what he thinks of Trump's measures. Hi, good evening, Nigel. Um, good evening. I think, uh, I think Trump's measures are divisive. I think they're wrong. I think they're hypocritical. Um, I think you talk about hypocrisy, but you don't mention the fact that uh, of the countries mentioned, um, Saudi Arabia is not included, where 15 of the, of the 19 hijackers came from. Mm. Um, I think that's completely ridiculous, and I think that has more to do with the fact that uh, that this is a policy that was really designed to protect Trump's business interests as much as anything. Oh, no, 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 stop. Please stop, Al. Please, please stop. The list is Obama's list. It was Obama's administration that defined these as countries that posed a risk to America, and actually they've been cracking down and making it harder and harder for anyone from those countries to come to America. Anyway, this has nothing to do with any business interest of Trump. This is Obama's administration. Sorry. Obama's list did not actually extend to a travel ban. It was nothing along these lines. And also... Well, nor is I'm this. Not, no, actually, nor is this I'm now. Saying that, yeah, but I'm not saying that Obama was not hypocritical either. I think ah. that he was wrong not to include Saudi Arabia. But what I'm saying is, what, what really bothers me about this is that you're, you're sort of turning up on these shows and you're defending somebody who's a pathological liar and somebody who's proven to be so. And I want to ask you directly, do you, do you agree that he is a liar? Do you think that he's, he lied over, for example, thousands of Muslims celebrating on 9-11? Or do you think that he lied when he told the Christian net, uh, broadcast network that, uh, that Christians were, were basically a low priority as against Muslims? Okay. How, many, um, how, how many Christian refugees from Syria have come into the United Kingdom? I, I don't know the figure. I don't know how many. I'm told it's none. Right. Okay. Well, I'm told it's none. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, look, but, but, but look, this is, Al, this debate tonight is not about Trump's personality. You know, we can debate Trump's personality and, and he, I would just, you know, knowing him a bit, I would describe him as being rather like a person with a magnetic field around him and he attracts some and he repels others. He is the big alpha male. The point, Al, I'm really asking people is surely there's nothing wrong with him putting into place something upon which he was directly elected. That's the question I'm asking. There's nothing wrong with it if it makes sense, uh, but there is something wrong with it if it's part of a project to demonise a minority and to fan the flames of division, which is actually going to, to sort of help him to get to power and keep him in power. And I don't think you can divest his character from this debate. I think it's central to this debate because this, this whole thing has been predicated. This goes beyond populism. This is actually demagoguery. Well, Al, I'm, 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 I'm going to take issue with you. I, I actually think they've looked in horror at France and Germany and said it ain't going to happen here. But, Al, I thank you for your call. Facebook messages. Wayne Kilkenny says, uh, ban the American president because he is keeping his country safe. Wow. Uh, Scott says, the last two US presidents attacked foreign countries, bombed and shot the people. Trump only wants to stop them visiting. Yet this gets a bigger reaction. Seriously, when did a halt to travel start to overshadow wars? Scott, there was a point made by George Galloway last night. He said, all this condemnation of Trump, and yet the British Labour Party supported Democrat administrations who led us into wars in which up to a million Muslims in the Middle East died. So, Scott, your point's very good. Galloway, as he, as he would tend to, went further. And Paul Wiley on Facebook says, I hope they've got big buckets to catch all the liberal tears in London tonight. It will flood half the city otherwise. I wonder what Nemo in Harrogate uh, thinks of Trump's immigration policies and his right having won an election to put them into place. Hi, Nigel. Hi. Um, first, first of all, I want to say that I think this is probably the biggest political grassroots movement that we've probably seen in our lifetimes. And I think the, the kind of the globalist establishment are doing everything they can to kind of shoot it down or to limit the, the power of it. Yes, it's very... Actually, what's going on here is very similar to the anti-Brexit camp, isn't it? It's the same people, it's the same media organisations, it's kind of the same arguments uh, saying that we, we, you know, we're not really entitled to do this and they want to try and change the rules. I know, Neil, I'm with you on that. I mean, I, I agree completely. Um, Essentially, as well, I think it's a, a way for them to virtue signal. Um, they were up in arms about Trump's uh, intention to waterboard, for example, but mm. yet yeah, we trade with Saudi Arabia, who, who support beheading, stoning and flogging, stuff like that. Um, well, I, obviously, I, like you said earlier, Saudi Arabia have taken no, no immigrants as well, so it, you can't cut the... You can't have your cake and eat it. You've got to take a line and draw a line in the sand if you, 
you, you can't, uh, you know, you, do you know what I'm saying? So basically, I, I Nemo, basically, we're hypocrites, aren't we? Because we choose I, to I attack. Would say so, yeah, yeah. yeah, we choose to attack Trump, and we let Saudi Arabia and others get off scot free. Nemo, love your point. I'm going to ask Callum in Medway what he thinks. Callum, good evening. Good evening. I, th I think you slightly alluded to this earlier in the show, but I just wanted to ask you directly about it. So I'd like to preface this question by saying that I think that the entire petition is absolutely bathed in hypocrisy. Mm. I mean, particularly the notion that Trump is bad for the United Kingdom due to the fact that he temporarily barred people from the US based on their ideology and their views. And so therefore, the obvious solution is that we should ban him from the UK based on his views. I mean, this is blindingly obvious hypocrisy and also potentially damaging to the future relationship that the UK has with the US which is particularly relevant now, obviously, as we enter a stage of economic uncertainty after Brexit. Yeah, but, I mean, I mean, but, I mean, he likes our country, Callum, doesn't he? He likes yeah, us. Yeah. He was warm to our prime minister. He says Brexit's great. We want to do trade. He made a fresh commitment to NATO. I mean, a lot of this is actually potentially quite good news, I'd have thought. Yeah, my question to you, though, that, that was just a preface. Yeah. I think you might have slightly alluded to this earlier in the show as well. Uh, my apologies if you have. But my question to you is as follows. You know, out of the terrorist atrocities carried out on U.S. soil in recent years, a significant number of them were committed by those from Saudi Arabia, mm. a location which hasn't found itself on the list of, you know, the temporarily banned countries. Does this not contradict the entire executive order and the, the apparent motives for its implementation? Well, you know, I mean, well, Trump, well, Trump has been removing many of the policies put in place by Obama, such as, you know, Obamacare. Well, so well Trump, I mean, Trump has only been there just over a week, Callum. And what he's done is he's taken the advice that the Obama administration have painstakingly put together. That doesn't mean that this list could not be more comprehensive. Uh, but, he, but, but, you know, the idea that he has somehow arbitrarily picked out these countries because he doesn't like them and put a Muslim ban in place is wrong on every single level. Um, we've got some more texts and tweets. Um, if this ban isn't against Muslims, tell me, Mr Farage, to whom does it refer? That's anonymous. Uh, it refers to bad people who might do America harm. That is what it is all about. Um, Nigel, these liberal people are hateful and intolerant. They can't accept democracy and are obsessed with appearing tolerant to other cultures for their own selfish reasons. Andy from Falkirk. And my final thought on all of this is I'm old enough to remember the Thatcher... Reagan period. Um, I remember that at no point did the media or the left at any point give up their relentless assault on the character and the policies of these people. Indeed, there are still plenty of people in Britain today who absolutely hate the thought and the legacy and the memory of Margaret Thatcher as a human being. And my thought is that none of this is going to change. None of this is going, to, is, is going to improve. Those that are out in Whitehall tonight, they don't want to listen. They're not interested. They all think 2016 was a mistake. Brexit shouldn't have happened. None of it should have happened. We need to turn the clock back. Perhaps we even need to get rid of the concept of democracy. It's too awful. We might get things we don't like. You've been listening to The Nigel Farage Show here on LBC. I'm back tomorrow evening at 7. Coming up...